Sure. You might Oh, it's since 2014. 
And I found a little bit of dancing open because a friend of mine in the Alberta government heard about it from friend of hers, who forwarded the, the link to me and said this might be something you're interested in. It is crazy to me that as somebody in the field, I didn't hear about it. So what I think is really important for everyone to remember is any time of an event like this is always somebody's first time here. And this happens in government all the time. This happens in, in um, uh, academics all the time. There's all sorts of concepts and um, acronyms and groups that are mentioned that we just assume everyone knows. I don't for a lot of So a super useful thing going forward for me would be selfishly, totally for me, <laughs> would be um, contact lists of people who work in this field who would love to be able to talk to somebody else in the field about what's going on, things that they're interested in. Um, if anybody were to create such a list, I would happily be on it. Um, important documentation like here is uh, key terms that anybody getting into this field should really know. I think people have been working in the field for a while now. But every year there are more and more people coming in, and I know I could have used a cheat sheet coming in. I literally had to Google open data, and then Wikipedia open data, and then ask some people very nicely about it when I started. And um, so to just have a, hey, you're working in open access or open data, here is some basic information um, that you can use to just get a better handle on the, on the concepts would be super, super useful. So yeah, that would be that would be a great thing to do personally for me, but also for other people in the dream. Thanks. Thank you. Really? So Amy, I remember when you first told me about this event in the fall. And I remember one of the things that we talked about was at some point really need to engage our colleagues in collections in this discussion. I, as I reflect on the last day and a half, so many of the issues around culture and resourcing and breaking the models that we currently find ourselves in, we will need to enlist our colleagues in that. So I really hope Carrie Fuller piece will be that we, in some fashion, organize this group, maybe with that group, the two tribes will meet and work it out, and I really will mess with them. So, as far as what I've got to do, I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to get back to the office, all related to this, and that would be my strong suggestion. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to build on that a little bit and say that the one thing we need to advance open is more collaboration. Collaboration between librarians, collaboration between librarians and other people at our institutions, collaboration between institutions, uh, between provincial groups, between different organizations. I think that would be the number one thing that I would say would help advance with them. So I have not no role in my job to do with open scholarship or anything, so I have to answer about that personal interest, but the thing that I really liked that came out of one of the meetings I was today was um, someone mentioned we need to prepare young scholars to advocate for open, and I feel as a teaching librarian, it's very much something that I can do, and I, I got almost only permission to do that, so start bringing undergrads on board, um, because I, I think it would be great to help them with their best advocates moving forward, so I just appreciate um, you know, how much I got from today and how much learning I did, and I also recognize how much you know, we have it's a bit of um, an echo chamber in here, and I, I thought at the larger institutions there would be, you know, a lot more movement, but it sounds like in all of our institutions it's very peaceful. So I'm, I'm also on board, um, and I think there's a lot of people that are not specifically in the field, but they care about it. So I will do more talking. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Registration list. <laughs> um, first, I want to say thank you to the folks who organized this meeting and also the sponsors. Um, yeah, it's really nice to be in a room with a lot of people that you only have ever interacted with online, and it is it, it does make my heart feel good. Um, so I hope we can do it again. And I guess um, to that end. 
Uh, in one of the sessions, we were talking about uh, a scholarly communications association, and I kind of went into that thinking, mm, I'm not so sure about that. Um, but something uh, from Spark that is really resonating with me, he talked about uh, developing a lot of that that can support people. And I think if we think about um, this group of people and what we're all engaged with as like a really diverse sort of garden of people uh, doing all sorts of different things, but if we can work together to cultivate the soil and the community and the people that are doing this work, I think that we will start to see um, really great things coming out of the Canadian ecosystem. So I'm motivated to keep Working uh, cultivating that community and that framework for great work. Uh, that was going to be one of the things that I was going to also say. Um, but I, I'm going to take the opportunity to say thank you. Uh, one is, again, that sort of collaboration and um, cross pollination in uh, disciplinary associations. I think it's something that we really start thinking about how to actually get a lot of our echo chamber and into the different associations across Canada uh, of scholars and other community. I think that would be really great for the niche. And then uh, a great vehicle for that and also for professional uh, development and support would be kind of a, some sort of a, a professional association for scholars and communications because I think the grassroots uh, that has seen the community of practice growing, uh, it, it will be it's maturing and it's evolving, and I think it could really do with a bit more uh, official structure around it to keep it sustainable and organized, and also to kind of be, uh, I think, a voice that is needed um, in the space to sort of try and bring some of this work that we're all doing together. And then also, as uh, new professionals come in um, to support them so that they're not alone, because when, I think when we all start, I think we're alone, and we don't want anybody to be alone again when we start, like, they really should be. Like shadows through just like law library time, medical library time. Uh, you know, like we're 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 a mature enough group in the library land that I think we should really think about how we need to cultivate all of them all together. <laughs> At the um, risk of sounding repetitive, uh, I felt like the two terms that I kept hearing um, over the last couple days are collaboration and infrastructure. And it's come clear to me that you can't have one without the other. Yeah. And uh, as we move ahead with our particular product, Coalition Publica, I want to, um, I, I'm making a commitment to myself on to take for granted the people involved in the infrastructure um, uh, to neither underestimate nor overestimate your uh, energy and enthusiasm for open projects, um, but um, but also to see each one of us as a as a resource that needs to be used wisely and carefully and engaged at the right time issues because if we fail to meet our goals and build the, the things that we would like to see this support our own work, um, uh, we will have failed each other in a way. And uh, I don't think I don't think this group um would like to say that. And so uh, I think we could all make a commitment to each other to just support each other and that would be very helpful. There's been much discussion around centralization versus decentralization of infrastructure. And what really I think evolved from a lot of the discussion was perhaps it's more of a pooling of resources whereby as a community we can we all have particular goals in common. Some of us may have you know specific strategic elements that take us off the path a little bit, but for those resources and, and those goals that we have in common to pool those resources, to make those investments, to advocate for, for grant funding. But it's, again, it's forming a community around infrastructure and ensuring that key elements like preservation and storage, 
that, uh, you know, a long-term viability for infrastructure persists in the future. We know your brains are too tight. Um, so I, I'll uh, make some commitments. Um, I, I think I need to be more mindful about how much support there actually is out there because um, even though I think I'm quite well resourced at my institution and I have people working with me toward our goals, I, I definitely get down sometimes and burned out and just wonder what I'm doing and whether it's worth anything. And I think I actually need to connect more with the community. Um, which I thought I, I actually thought I was doing okay at, but then when I came here and just to experience this, I realized actually I'm kind of tapped out and um, and longing for a connection. So I'm I'm gonna actually reach out more for help. Um, I also um, um, want to learn more about what people are doing um, outside of this framework that I live within, which is like like large university, large well-funded, you know, medical school degree granting university. Like there, I heard some amazing innovations from people at all manner of institutions, and um, I guess I, I I'm in favor of of forming a national association for scholarly communications workers um, because I think um, if we can make it our job to begin to share some of the stuff, we won't have to just wait until we stumble across something to solve a problem. But we may have had for a long time. So, yeah. My, my I think a lot of what we're talking about are information. I, my background is knowledge management at McGill, and so I think we have a big organizational information gap that we need to identify and fill. And I just I, I kept striking me throughout the whole conversation. Actually, we are having this meta conversation of how you know, we need to be gathering information and getting access to the scholarly communications information and data that's out there. So hopefully that means that it's solvable because it's hopefully within our professional realm. <laughs> So my commitment when I get back home is to think more. Um, I am often kind of chasing the next project and trying to meet deadlines and um, trying to kind of sometimes keep up with what's going on in the community and best practices. And uh, someone mentioned, you know, reading about all the developments that are happening in school um, constantly. And uh, I realized today in some of the meetings that I don't really think a whole lot. <laughs> I consume information and I regurgitate information by thinking critically about what actually my priorities are and what I can do as a person and what abilities I have and what abilities I can help foster in other people to support this movement is something that I often don't do or don't take time to do. I think it's a better way to put it. So, my commitment is actually to think more and to think more critically about what I do and its impact and how I can make that more available for the public. So, one thing for sure I'm going to do is post a question to the Slack channel, which in some way is a good reminder that we have a community practice with a lot of experts here, so I'm going to tap into that. 
Um, I'm also going to do something I think we've talked about, which is reach out to some PI from one of our labs and think about that as a new mode of engaging faculty in the right way. Um, so I'm going to do that for sure. And then I'm just going to take away the sweet, sweet memories of being in a room of colleagues who I didn't even have to be the one to bring up about like the fact that half the collection never circulated and maybe we should just stop flying all the stuff and, you know, and transition us to other things. Um, Oftentimes it feels like yes, my institution invites you and it's just like in the times of like a radical <laughs> proposition and I'm the only one to think about that, but it'll be nice to tap into this experience and there was like 20 people in that room were all like, oh yeah, we can talk about that because that's not my everyday. <laughs> I think I'm going to incorporate some of the things um, shared by Tom Pablo and his presentation into my allocation topic. So whenever I'm giving a talk, I'll, I'll come or I can access and whenever there's a pushback in the, um, in the line of, well, we would like to do that, but the world will not accept us, I now have the data to say, yes, you think that. And your colleague talks to about you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll bring a little bit of self-awareness. I hope that we can help the internal conversation around. I'm actually looking forward to the Get content on our platform. We also need to work on 
our users find this content. So this is one of my areas of research, and then at this hour, when we reach out to universities and missionary repositories, please kindly of powers the platform to carry out that research. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, Carl for the travel poetry, allowing you to be part of this great experience. Just to correct the small misconception, just to say that the university sponsored, the university library sponsored, are really the ones that are responsible for the travel bursaries. <laughs> Carl is managing the money, but uh, that part was part of the library competition. <laughs> So I wanted to mention um, something that I can't get into. I haven't read open about sharing information in the past about our experience as an open access press. And um, I, can, I can offer that for those that are interested in studying different kinds of applications and different models and that sort of thing. Um, and I would also appreciate continued conversation between the university presses and the librarians that are doing the work of communications with the institution. At this point, they don't feel deeply connected. And uh, there could be some additional work done to bridge that case. Mm -hmm. So based on the conversation today, I'm going to try to push an open access policy for an institution because it's a it's visible and it's a small thing you can do and you can tell language, it's a little bit of vague and it's still something. And then the other thing about that is that I will have to drink Kool-Aid as well, which means I would like to publish an article and I will make a requirement for their open access. Build on that overall open access policy. I think one thing we would like to do is to try to talk to our institutions and administrators about um, how to cover that into uh, internal funding because we talk about tri agency um, funding opportunities, but what about internal funding projects? I think that's something that we're um, trying to do. And I also learned some of the ideas from you on the thing we have one for sharing. And also, something here about um, some regional change that must be coming out. I mean, COCO has one just happened in the local for scholarly communication training. I heard the next is that we come as well in BC. So I appreciate this kind of regional connection and community of practices. So that's we can also try to uh, have a research or some kind of online presence, even though we can meet frequently personally can still communicate uh, via online like that. So I think by that. Thank you. We wouldn't have to be creating our own good guide, all our own good guides and same resources again. We have somewhere to point things to. I, I really like the idea of cross Canada collaboration and beyond just beyond the association um, or the guild. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was talking about my grandson, which is also useful, like community practices 
what we learn, but like I learn so much from other people and what other people are doing. Um, it's very easy to feel siloed and to feel like I'm like just within your own community. So, but to me, the cross collaboration, the, the, the group that is working specifically on creating resources, um, or whoever ends up doing that, that to me, I think would be incredibly valuable because it would give us some authority and some, a place to sort of end a project on um, that we can work for. And when I go back, I'm going to share what kind of discussions were here with my research group. Um, just so that they can hear the different discussions, and I'll share just a little bit like the program and, and just talk about some of the things. Um, this is there. So there where people who couldn't be here, which is a whole bunch of people that are not here, um, know more about the county. Um, so uh, I'm also going to uh, use uh, what I've learned yesterday from the keynote to more carefully stage the, the conversation with Dr. Beer on how they view their role uh, in, in Open and, and their ability to participate in the, uh, um, as Open scholars. Um, stage that carefully, uh, of course, but uh, I learned a lot uh, as well from uh, everyone's discussions today on how to approach that, that topic with their own. Back. Bring that back. Go back to uh, to uh, my colleagues. Uh, in terms of this is necessarily a commitment, but in terms of the a common priority that, that surfaced from the conversation today, um, that seemed uh, to me to be particularly pressing is, is uh, how do we arrive at a, an addition for national infrastructure here, national infrastructure, uh, where regional consortia leads. In their scholarship, in some sort of national, uh, uh, and how do we make sure this vision uh, for funders, researchers, and research institutions, including libraries, to realize uh, the benefits of uh, uh, open in ways that uh, match with their broad priorities, whether they mean promoting fairness in the research, enhancing the lives of citizens, uh, fostering an active community. Uh, so, a vision. Uh, for what we can collectively achieve on the national level, so it does a better job of aligning the priorities uh, or the aims of the state of this to have an even state of the 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 I have lots of thoughts, and I don't want to be the first one to bring things to my I'll try and be as coherent as possible because I have lots of thoughts. Uh, but um, I woke up in the middle of the night last night um, and thought, ah, oh, I hope this will come. But I missed that opportunity, so I think I'll take it now. It's my fish bowl. But what's holding us back is something that I actually haven't heard much today. Um, and it's about, I, hope, I always realize this, libraries have a PR problem. I think um, you, you see this all the time with the Ithaca results every couple of years whenever they have it. What do the faculty think about libraries? Oh, books and journals, books and journals, right? We're so much more than that. And I even hear this from librarians too. Well, what are we going to do in an open access future when we're not there to buy things? Uh, so, there's so much more that we can do. We need to be better at communicating this. But it's a matter of getting over that PR problem. We're not people checking out books, we're, I mean, that's fine, but we're also so much more than just books. Um, and so, I, I often start any kind of discussion with faculty, just telling them, hello, I'm faculty too. I have a research program, I'm a researcher, I publish. And that kind of breaks some of those barriers and some of those um, stereotypes and then it creates a little bit of credibility and then maybe I can talk about the publishing aspect because I think there's a big barrier for them to recognize us as experts on this. And so before we can even communicate about all of our solutions, about all of our services, we have to be credible and tell them we do know about this. 
because they think that they're the experts on publishing, and they are on their unique, narrow field. Uh, but we have a unique other vision besides our own just publishing in LIS. We also see the behind the scenes, the economics, and the access problems. And these are the things that they need to know about because they don't know this. They don't see that to the same extent. And once they do, um, sometimes, they, I mean, they fall off their chairs sometimes, like they're, they're asking me to subscribe to a journal, and I say, you know how much this journal costs? And sometimes I'll say, it's not worth that, forget it. And so I, I insert this into all the conversations. So I think we need to be better at <laughs> I think we need to be better at really communicating um, this awareness raising and outreach to faculty and to undergrads as well. There are future faculty, I totally agree. Um, and they are really interested too. It's a whole new view. They know about textbooks and the problems in the textbook market, but it's this whole new world and they hear about journals too. But I, I just think that we need to, to really think about our outreach. And, and Juan's um, presentation yesterday made me think about that too, thinking about the systematic, systemic um, prestige problems with um, all the incentive structures of the law and and sort of getting at those um, inner promotional guidelines with the new area of focus in the next few years. They're on his website. We'll I can we'll send the we will send it to you. It's on his website. Go to alperin.ca. It's already posted. But we'll send up. We have a final communication. All you guys and we'll send it. We'll put a link to Je ne sais pas, si, j'ai pas une idée sur comment s'organiser pour, pour pousser plus 
loin de la réflexion, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il faut continuer quand même encore à poser ces questions-là. Euh, même si je crois beaucoup au projet, euh, au projet Open Air, au projet d'interface de découverte, qui au moins nous donnerait une visibilité, une vitrine nationale sur euh, les contenus canadiens, j'ai l'impression que ces discussions sur la, la nature de l'infrastructure du découvre devraient être un peu plus loin. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so from the Syrian perspective, A, I'm really glad you sponsored this. <laughs> it was a really valuable thing, and it's delightful to, uh, I mean, I've spoken to many of you, and you have one on one with several of you, and delightful to see so many of you in the room and meet you in person. Um, I will commit that Syrian continues to. Um, Support, facilitate, engage in, partner on, collaborate in activities that um, facilitate access to knowledge and advance open uh, through multiple channels. I'm going to call it. I'm going to go. Oh, my foot's falling too. <laughs> 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 I'm getting old. Um, so, I, I guess my perspective is more at the pragmatic level. Um, and I think we talked about the uh, infrastructure of services needed. One piece that's missing is we, through our survey, the Carl survey, we find out the picture of probably what our investments are, but what we need is to have a vision of where we need to go so that we can identify where our priority has to be. So I think that's one thing. So I'm not committing to anything that I'm talking about, but I think it has to be done in the community that you can contribute to. Um, and then I think um, another thing that struck me was this issue of common problems that so many institutions have and how can we even go beyond just a community practice, but actually have a shared resourcing around, you know, addressing some of these, these problems or moving forward with, um, with uh, for example, repository development or something. And, and then the third thing is, I, I would like you, I would like to come out of this, I know you're, there's only a white paper, but I would like to recommend to you that you have a two-page, very high-level uh, publication report that has the most important recommendation for coming up here that can be delivered to um, the decision makers, including Carl, members of the CRP, and even if those recommendations could include what organizations you think should be taking them out of so um, I also like to thank you a lot for, for organizing the great He's tying us off. <laughs> so I feel like I should turn it out so it's like everybody else. So I'm going to see if I'm uh, going to make it on time. Uh, so two, two points uh, before it's in full in these conversations for me. One is that, you know, sort of at its core fundamentally, this book is about people. And we talk all the time, and I think rightly so, about the importance of infrastructure and the importance of advocacy and policy. These things are really important, but I think too often we miss that sort of sort of underlying all of that is the focus on people. And so I'm really excited to see what comes out of this in terms of you know creating more of sort of a foundational layer of the you know, sort of community that's a practice around scholar on around open education, open data, and how to collect you know the practitioners and provide that kind of support structure. Um, you know, for the people that are doing work. Um, and the second thing that I, we haven't talked about too much in sort of this circle, but it was really present in the conversations, um, is that you know, we really have to make sure that equity is fundamental design principle in what we're doing. And um, 
in 30 seconds, that's a different notification. Um, you know, there's this great phrase that I learned last year at last year's library publishing forum from Kathleen uh, Catherine Public um, in talking about accessibility and how it needs to be uh, built in, not built on. And I think that's a really important phrase to keep in mind in you know, the systems we're creating. You know, so sort of looking at the you know, sustainability models and making sure we're not sort of replicating an activities in the current system in an open system. You know, you know, sort of who are these systems that are open to not just to read but also to participate in? And you know, what are the governments? I see it didn't. I'm the first one to buy the idea. <laughs> what are the governments? Uh, governance models. You know, who has power, who's included, who's excluded, and sort of always keeping that front and center as we, we go forward. I I think actually today I realized that I'm not alone in this work. And so it's really nice to hear other people's stories. And I think the ability to communicate with each other is uh, critical. I'd like to see more of this continue in whichever forms we can. Um, so again, I, I guess it's the communication element that I'm thinking of and uh, just sharing stories I think they make a difference. And just realizing I in Ontario, we're so used to our big media to large size institutions. It was great to hear from other groups, from government, and from really small universities, which, you know, how are we going to do this nationally? I don't know, but I really want all this to be included if we can, from the very small to the very large. So it's a challenge, but I think we can do it. The last thing I said is just a clarification. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, on behalf of Carl, I would say totally to what Claire said, that we also will remain committed to open and we'll definitely be working with DRDM. But also, I, I guess with my action, I will try to stay plugged in with the rest of you here. Um, I think I will remember many of you because there were a lot of people here that I haven't met before. Uh, so I really appreciate that, and I will be responsive to your email that you sent me because please feel free to do so. If there are things that you think Carl should know about, um, or if there's ways in which we can participate, then give me a call. Is anyone on the edge of their seat, like maybe, maybe not? I'm gonna, seeing none, I'm gonna just count down three, two, <laughs> one. That's the conclusion of our discussion. And thank you so much, everyone who shared and everyone who came and listened and supported. Um, everybody else here. And we're going to move into closing our program. We're super stealthy. <laughs> okay, all right. So, a few things. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, this was better than we were joking in one of the sessions that how many of us in Skullcombe can set up a a, a workshop or a presentation and there's like one person there and not not for nothing. We have those fears setting up this meeting. We're like, well what if we just expect like 25 people? Okay, maybe 40 people. And then 65 people showed up. So thank you all so much. We are also very aware that 65 people is not enough and not representative and all those things. So we still have lots to work on. Um, before, I'm just going to get right to what the organizing committee has been talking about right now, which is please, will you please stand up? Please is amazing. <laughs> so, a round of applause for you. We've done a few work, this would not have happened, so we've got a very silly thing. Really nice. You don't have to, I won't make you open it on everybody. Oh. <laughs> Leave like tiny. 
So now you can just imagine what we might have done. <laughs> um, we did not organize a social event for the end of this. However, Juan Pablo's birthday is today. And there is an open science beers group that is meeting tonight at 6 p.m. at the local, which is in Gastown, if you want to join. It's an open invite, and it's just all the folks who work in open science in Vancouver go and they get together. It's kind of like when we had our ILL drink ups in Montreal. Like, 